Dr. Glasberg Grodzinski, thank you very much indeed for coming to tell us at eCancer TV about mTOR, among other yes, things. My pleasure. Uh, carcinoid uh, cancer, pancreas cancer. You are a true translational doctor, aren't you? Yeah, you work I'm in fine. the lab in Tel Aviv and you also work in the clinic looking after patients. Yes. Um, what sort of uh, oncology practice do you have or endocrinological Actually, oncology? Actually, I'm an endocrinologist, mm. yes. And uh, I've trained in Israel and then I have some training with uh, Professor Ashley Grossman in London and then returned to Israel and I have uh, one of the referral centers in Israel for patients with neuroendocrine tumors and we are performing also uh, basic studies in our laboratory. Which neuroendocrine tumors? A gastroenteropancreatic tumors, um, a multiple endocrine uh, a, a neoplasia mm. sy syndromes, uh, all kind of neuroendocrine tumors except mostly pituitary. Sure. But that's an interesting area to be in at the moment because yes, there's lots of new uh, things happening. And uh, I mean, one of the first uh, uh, family genes to crack was, uh, was men, one, man, two, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, tell me what you do in the lab. So in the lab, uh, we have a few projects now. We are working on cell lines originating in neuro neuroendocrine tumors, and we are trying to see if um, different drugs, such as mTOR inhibitors alone or in combination with other uh, uh, classes of drugs like histone deacetylase inhibitors or um, chimeric molecules, um, are influencing the proliferation of tumor of cells. Uh, also, we are performing studies in um, uh, cells uh, derived from primary cultured tumors like medullary thyroid carcinoma or carcinoid or pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and so on. Yeah. This is Why would mTOR be interesting in a, a neuroendocrine tumor? Because I mean, I know it's, it's very interesting in all the other cancers. And uh, actually, uh, there are lots and lots of publications now um, showing the importance of inhibiting mTOR. And you know, there is a new class of drugs now, uh, the um, competitive ATP mTOR inhibitors, which maybe will be more um, potent than the usual mTOR inhibitors that we have now. That's why. What sort of endpoints do you use in your studies? Um, proliferation, uh, apoptosis, um, cell cycle, um, yeah. Okay. The problem, of course, is that many of these cancers are very slow growing. Yes and they're resistant to most of the conventional sorts of cytotoxics and so on. And there's a lot of uh, uh, work uh, being presented at this meeting about um, octreotide uh, uh, lookalikes, somatostatin analogs. Um, there's a paper on, uh, on radio, uh, radiotherapy using radioazotope yes. with yes. Lute luteotride, et cetera, et cetera. And certainly we do a lot of that in, in Milan. Um, what, you, what would you say at the moment is the standard treatment for uh, um, hormone producing, a peptide producing, uh, gastrointestinal uh, tumor? I think that the standard treatment uh, is to consider surgery. First, and surgery, first, always. Uh, not only to completely excise the tumor, but also to try to debulk in tumor mass. And then, of course, to give medical treatment to be able also to improve symptoms and also to try to inhibit tumor growth. In patients and who have not been inadequ adequately operated? In functioning and non-functioning patients and also uh, in usually most of these patients have metastatic disease uh, at the time of the diagnosis because of the slow growing rate of the tumor. Sure. And uh, what's the order of, uh, of uh, medicines that you give in, in Tel Aviv in your so, clinic? So uh, actually it depends on tumor biology mm -hmm. and on patient status. If we are looking of course um, uh, to see the K67 proliferation index of a tumor and then uh, to see the other um, um, histopathological characteristics of a tumor, if there is any invasion, vascular, you know, perineural, or a metastatic disease. So depending on this and depending on the uptake, for example, of uh, octreotide on uh, um, functioning uh, imaging, like <coughs> uh, gallium uh, 68 dotatoc, et cetera, PET-CT. So usually we are going to uh, give somatostatin analogs and uh, if the K67 is low. And if the K67 is higher, so we are moving uh, towards chemotherapy and sometimes combining this with somatostatin analogs and through peptide receptor radioligand treatment. Mm -hmm. And then if uh, there is a failure of these possibilities, we are looking for new drugs. It's sure. quite a long list now. New and which ones, uh, which mTOR uh, drugs are on the top of your list? Of course, uh, the one which is which we may give uh, orally, which is the RAD001 Affinitor. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there are quite a 
many studies right now, um, radiant studies, if you know, radiant program studies mm -hmm. in patients with gastroenteropancreatic tumors, uh, which are showing that uh, Everonimus is, has important antiproliferative effects in sure. these patients, mostly in, in ones that have um, low to moderate uh, differentiated mm -hmm. tumor. But the single agent data is a little disappointing. It's yes. when it's looking as if it's going to yes. end up being combined in with something else. With, so, yeah. in your area, what would you be com looking to combine Everolimus with? Yes. With one of these new somatostatin analogs, okay. usually with the somatostatin analogs. One of the new analog. ones. Yeah, uh, that we are starting or? always with the uh, older ones like mm -hmm. uh, octotide LAR mm -hmm. or somatulin, and then we consider to give, uh, for example, some to thirty or pasteurotide, which may have more mm -hmm. anti-proliferative effects because. Yep of its action on somatostatin receptor 3. Yeah, sure. Yes. Sure. So you think maybe after that you would uh, add in ev Everolimus, for instance, yes, and continue with the somatostatin blockade? The problem is that uh, we can use right now the Everolimus only as a compassionate drug. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah. yes, this yeah. is the next step. And then we consider some other possibilities like tyrosine kinase inhibitors, yeah. you know, serafinib, sunitinib, or temozolomide. Um, which may be effective in a uh, significant percentage of these tumors. Good. Um, Rare cancers, but very, very important and very difficult to manage. Uh, thank you very much for uh, you very much giving indeed. us uh, a very clear view of how to do it. Thank you. Thank you.